Good afternoon. Um, the Tuesday, July 13th, 2021 meeting of the Committee on Finance and Administrative Services is now called to order. Um, will the Chief Advisor please call the roll? Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Present. Terrific, thank you. Um, and I know Trustee Kent is en route and um, Trustee Williams usually is chairing this and he is running late due to a personal obligation today. So he hopefully will join us soon and I will just get us rolling. Um, so good afternoon again. Summer has come to Chicagoland, we think. Um, and with the landscape coming alive, we can also celebrate the continued distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. And I just wanna welcome everyone to our first in-person committee meeting in over a year. It feels great to be back and see everyone. So. Um, in a moment, Chief Financial Officer Rodriguez will be giving an update on the FY22 uh, annual budget, which will include information on the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund, or HIRF, is that how you say it? Or HIRF? Um, for those of you unfamiliar, um, the funding has provided student emergency grants and institutional funds during the COVID-19 pandemic to higher education institutions across the country. CFO Rodriguez will give us more information about the funds that City Colleges has received, as well as how the funding has been used. We will also review the board reports that will be considered during the June regular board meeting, which will take place later this afternoon uh, at 2 p.m. So before you get started, CFO, if you have any additional remarks for us today, and uh, great, and you can proceed with your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair Swanson. Good afternoon, trustees, chancellors, and officers of the district, and all others present online. Uh, welcome to the July 13th Finance and Administrative Services Committee. We are glad to be back in committee meetings, and welcome back, everyone. I'll just echo what Vice Chair Swanson just said. And I will be presenting the FY22 annual budget for consideration in today's board meeting. <clears throat> this presentation provides an overview of City College's proposed budget for FY 2022. First, I want to thank the Deputy CFO Jeff Wong and the budget team for the hard work in developing this year's budget. In addition, I want to recognize the collaborative effort with faculty and staff from all seven colleges as well as district office leadership over the, Is the, mic still on? Over the course of several months. The proposed Hello? budget is balanced. It shows that City Colleges continues to recover financially from the state budget impasse and the enrollment declines we've faced over the last decade. In this presentation, uh, we will go over the CCC strategic plans, budget priorities, and a, an overview of the budget highlights. You want to pause just for one second? Just to sure. sure all the facts are the Chair Massey is trying to join us by phone, so I just wanted to okay. not have you get interrupted. Yeah. No problem. I'm, I'm here. Okay. I'm, that, I'm on. Terrific. I'm on. Okay. Welcome. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Thanks, Thank you. Okay. Last December, CCC launched our Path Forward, our five year strategic framework and college plans, which build up our equity and strategic enrollment plans. Our vision serves as the North Star for our work and our core values our behavior, guide our behaviors, culture, and aspirations. You can find our framework and plans at ccc.edu forward slash strategic plan. Six key levers guide our strategies. An exceptional student experience, equity, economic responsiveness, excellence, collaboration, and institutional health. Within those strategies, there are 28 system-wide initiatives that will build the infrastructure and supports that our colleges need to execute successfully on their strategic plans and ensure the success of our students. The FY22 budget represents a year of recovery and strategic focus. As we continue to emerge from the pandemic, 
and execute on our strategic plans, equity plans, and enrollment plans. This budget reflects City College's commitment to providing our students and communities with an exceptional student experience, quality, responsive, and affordable education, equitable student outcomes, and collaborative, healthy environment underpinned by a culture of excellence. Key plan investments include a comprehensive suite of student support, the Chicago Roadmap, an enhanced marketing and enrollment infrastructure, and the restoration of a City College's wide athletics program, just to name a few. The FY22 budget holds the credit hour rate of $146 level for the sixth straight year, recognizing the economic strain of the pandemic. To balance the FY22 budget and continue our long-term recovery strategy, City Colleges relies on federal stimulus funds, taxing to the city levied cap, budgeting for tax increment financing surplus from the City of Chicago, and continued operational efficiencies. Okay. I will now provide a summary of the stimulus funds received by CCC as part of the Higher Educational Emergency Relief Fund, known as HERF. City colleges and our students have been awarded emergency relief funds. In total, we received $100 million for institutional purposes and $72 million for student emergency grants. To date, we have fully depleted all of the round one funds from the CARES Act, or HERF-1. And we've dispersed over 90% of the HERF-2 funds from the student portion. The HERF-2 institutional portion is largely being utilized in FY21 and 22 to cover lost revenue to help fill the financial gaps resulting from continued enrollment declines. For HERF-3, we are implementing an investment framework that will enable us to focus on access, retention, and completion efforts, student support enhancements, accelerating centers of excellence and in institutional health or financial stability, for ongoing updates on how we have spent the federal dollars you can visit the ccc.edu forward slash finance webpage. Okay. I will now provide an overview of the FY22 budget, the capital plan, and the district's current cash position. A tentative budget book has been available online at ccc.edu forward slash finance since June 1st, and we held a budget public hearing on June 15th. The overall budget for FY22 totals $509 million and is comprised of the following. An operating budget of $320 million, capital plan of $40.7 million, and restricted funds of $148.3 million. I'll break down each of these components on the following slides. Operating revenues total $320 million. The Illinois Community College Board best practice recommends that a third of our revenue comes from each of the following sources, local revenue, tuition, and state funding. As you can see in this chart, we fall short in state funding at 21% or 61.6 .6 million, and on tuition at 24% or 77.6 million. However, we make up for some of the shortfall in local revenue, which includes property taxes and the city TIF surplus at 42% or 135.4 million. The rest of our revenue sources come from federal revenue at 8% or 26.8 million from the stimulus funding and auxiliary enterprise funds such as child care funding at 3% or 8.5 million. Oops. Uh, our total operating expenses are 320 million. The biggest component of our budgeted expenses is salaries and benefits at 75% or 240 million. The next biggest component is fixed charges, which includes debt service or bond repayments, as well as district-wide leases at 8% or 24 million. These two components comprise 83% of our total expenses. The rest of the expense, expense items are from contractual services, materials and supplies, and scholarship and waivers and these proportions are all consistent with prior years. Okay. Our capital plan totals 40.7 million for FY22, which is primarily for the following projects across all colleges. The largest component, as you can see here, 
of the plan is for continued investments in technology necessary for continued operation and meeting student learning objectives. And the rest of the items are primarily for priority deferred maintenance projects, such as safety improvements, including elevators and escalators, and select programmatic enhancements. Funding sources for these projects will be a combination of the state, remaining bond proceeds, and cash reserves. While we have received some state capital funds for critical deferred maintenance projects, many of these projects' plans for FY22 are subject to further assistance from the state. The next slide is a view of the restricted resources, totaling $148.3 million. About 50% is for direct student assistance, 43% is from federal financial aid, and 6% from state MAP funding. Her funds from both the student and institutional portion comprise about 30% of the restricted resources we plan to utilize in FY22. And the remaining funds are for, from federal, state, and local grants. This chart illustrates the district's operating cash balances from FY 2013 to FY 2021. Our long-term financial outlook provides a plan to achieve stability in the district's cash position. In 2017, cash balances fell significantly below our 70 million CCC policy of 90 days cash in hand. During this time, we relied on our cash reserves to fund our capital improvement projects due to the state budget impasse and lack of a capital bill for several years. Under Chancellor Sagato's leadership, we have stabilized our cash reserve, primarily due to the sale of the district headquarters in FY20 and expense management efficiencies. The stimulus funds have also allowed us to preserve our cash reserves, and year-end cash balances in FY21 are $122 million. This concludes my presentation of the budget. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions? I think we're good. And thank you for your briefings too, sure. prior to the, to the meeting as well. Certainly. No, those were very helpful. Appreciate the time. Thank you again. Thank you. We will now move on to review the items proposed for board action at the July 13th regular board meeting, which will take place again after this meeting at 2 p.m. Will the chief advisor please proceed with the review of board reports? Thank you, Vice Chair Swanson. For our presenters, please proceed one after the other, briefly pausing to give the trustees an opportunity to ask any questions they have about the items being presented. We will begin with resolutions. CFO Rodriguez will review resolution 1.00. GC Gowen will um, review resolution 1.01. .01. I will review resolution 1.02. And President Jackson will review Resolution 1.03. Resolution 1.00 is to adopt the City Colleges of Chicago annual budget for fiscal year ending on June 30, 2022. The resolution highlights our compliance with the Public Community College Act as follow. On June 1st, the FY22 tentative budget book was made available for public review on the CCC website. On June 2nd, we gave notice of the budget public hearing in the Chicago Sun-Times, and on June 15, we held a public hearing for the budget. Thank you. Item 1.01 .01 will be discussed in closed session. Item 1.02. Is a resolution naming um, board members, board officers for this um, fiscal year. Resolution 1.03. Yes, resolution 1.03 is an agreement between the Board of Trustees and the City of Chicago Department of Family Support Services and the Board of Trustees and the Illinois Network of Child Care. I'm seeking approval for what will be our second intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Department of Family and Support Services for the Chicago Early Learning Workforce Scholarship. The term of the agreement is one year from January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021, with a total committed compensation of $3,530,000, $530,666, 
with anticipated additional funding during the second half of the year. In addition, I am seeking approval for a subagreement with the Illinois Network of Child Care Resource and Referral Agencies to cover programmatic costs and scholarship costs, including tuition, fees, and book vouchers for approved programs offered by our four-year university partners for a total of $2,060,330,000. $2, Board item, is it on? Board item 2.0 is a request to approve the July 2021 personnel report. There are 61 actions on this month's report. They include 19 new and rehires, 30 promotions, title, and salary changes, 11 separations and retirements, and as of July 5th, 2021, a base salary increase of up to 2.5% for non bargain for employees. Specifically, as of July 5th, 2021, each employee that was active in a full or part-time administrator or non bargain for job family prior to July 1st, 2020, and is in active status as of the date the non bargain for increase is paid, shall receive a base salary increase of up to 2.5%, provided that one, eligible non bargain for employees that have received a permanent base salary increase of less than 2.5% since July 1st, 2020, only receive the difference between that increase and this non bargain for increase, and two eligible non bargain for employees that have received a permanent salary increase equal to or greater than 2.5% since July 1st, 2020, shall receive no non bargain for increase. This concludes this month's personnel report. This month's resource development report includes. $154,844,361.50 of awards to City Colleges of Chicago. These dollars include the funds that CFO Rodriguez referred to, including HERF 2 and HERF 3, as well as the GEAR funds, the Governor's Emergency Education Relief Fund. Of that $154 million, $144 million reflects dollars from HERF 1, HERF 2, and HERF 3. City Colleges of Chicago also submitted 12 grants for a total of $4,857,878. Our milk daily submitted $9,500 in submissions for the pilot through Illinois FAA Institutions Fund. Before we move on to the um, agreements, CC going, will you do a resolution 102? Resolution 1.02 requests approval of the following members of the Board of Trustees as being elected as board officers in accordance with the policies of the board. The Chair, Walter E. Masi, Vice Chairperson, Elizabeth Swanson, Secretary, Peggy A. Davis. Thank you. We will move on to agreements which will proceed as follows. Vice Chancellor Williams will review agreement 4.00 and 4.01. Provost Potter will review agreement 4.02 and 4.03. CFO Rodriguez will review agreement 4.04 and 4.05. And CPO Dunning will review agreement 4.06 and 4.07. Please proceed. Agreement 4.00. Request the board's authority to execute an agreement with McCann Associates to maintain the computer platform service used for English placement for credit students. McCann provides the platform that City Colleges utilizes to administer the Read to Write exam, which is one of several methods by which incoming students are placed at the appropriate level within the English curriculum. This agreement is for the period beginning July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024 at a total cost not to exceed 360000 This agreement shall include an option for a two-year extension. Agreement 4.01, request the board's authority to execute an agreement with McGraw-Hill Global Educational Holdings, LLC, to provide the Alex Diagnostics and Placement Tool used for placing credit students into the appropriate math course. 
The agreement is the total, the agreement is for the period beginning July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024 at a cost not to exceed 1125000 This agreement shall include an ex option for a two-year extension. Agreement 4.02 is for the procurement of textbooks, periodicals, reference books, ebooks, and other electronic resources for each of our seven college libraries from four vendors, each selected by a single RFP process. The vendors are ProQuest, LLC, Cengage Learning Incorporated, EBSCO Information Services, and Canopy Incorporated. Last year, you may recall that I brought several separate renewals to the board for approval in the months of August and October. Those renewals were timed such that we managed this year to join all of our library materials needs together into a single RFP and a single request for board approval. All told, these agreements are for a period of five years, beginning July 1st, 2021, at a total cost not to exceed $915,000 annually. Agreement 4.03 is with the Chicago Area Interpreter Referral Service, also known as CARES, for sign language interpretation services. City Colleges provides sign language interpreting as part of its inclusive mission, as well as to meet its obligations under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Whereas we have both full-time and part-time interpreters on staff, we utilize a vendor to fill gaps where needed. This is our final renewal, which extends the agreement with CARES through July 31st, 2022, at a cost not to exceed $300,000. Agreement 4.04, .04. this is a request for an agreement with Chicago Transit Authority to participate in the UPASS program to provide transit cards to students during the FY22 academic year under their flexible enrollment policy for all full-time students as well as part-time students enrolled for at least nine credit hours. The term of this agreement begins with the fall 2021 term through the end of the summer 22 term. This is at a total cost not to exceed $750,000. Agreement 4.05, this is an option to renew an agreement with Nelnet Business Solutions, Inc. Nelnet provides flexible payment plan options for students making over time. There are no backgrounds and the plans are interest-free. The term of the renewal is from August 5, 2021 through August 4, 2022, with one option to renew for one additional year at a total cost not to exceed $300,000 for the contract term. Agreement 4.06 requests a board's approval on an agreement with LinkedIn for job wrapping, job slots, and recruiter seats to advertise vacancies and recruit prospective applicants. The request is for a term of July 28, 2021 through July 27, 2022, at a cost not to exceed $42,525. City Colleges has recommended a waiver of MBEWE -E compliance due to the nature of the services of online job posting. Agreement 4.07 requests a board's approval on an agreement with Academic Search Inc. to provide executive search services for our Vice President Search at Daly College for the period commencing no sooner than July 13, 2021 and ending no later than December 31, 2021 at a cost not to exceed $45,000. Academic Search specializes in higher education and city colleges successfully utilized them in our recent search for vice chancellor enrollment. City Colleges has recommended a waiver of MBE WBE compliance due to the nature of the executive search services, the proposed timeline for the placement, the confidential information of candidates, and the proprietary systems of academic search. We utilized a piggyback option through a previous RFP process that academic search participated. Purchase 5.00 requests the board's authority to issue purchase orders to a pool of six janitorial supply vendors for the supply and delivery of janitorial supplies district-wide 
to facilitate the cleaning of facilities and stocking of paper goods for the period of July 14, 2021 through July 14, 2022 at a total cost not to exceed $900,000. The six vendors are Aztec Supply Corporation, Bella Bagno, Intercity Supply Corporation, Equity Industrial Supply, North American Corporation, and QC Enterprises. Right, college. <laughs> Sorry about that. College requests the board's approval for the purchase order of seventy-four thousand dollars to William Crow Inc. DBA ADEX to provide an ER4I robotic training cell uh, from the period of July thirteenth, twenty twenty-one, through July twelfth, twenty twenty-two, at a cost of not to exceed seventy-four thousand dollars. This CUTAR training platform instructor certificate will provide students and instructors with the curriculum and instructional guides involving our CNC program in consultation with Daly College. This FENEX certified program and educational products can only be purchased and distributed by ADEX and is only offered to educational institutions. Five point. 5.02, Richard Day Daily College is requesting approval for the purchase of a new Festo Mechatronics training equipment with funding for this purchase through our Workforce Equity Initiative grant. The purchase of this equipment will enable students in the advanced manufacturing programs at Daily College to earn industry-recognized certificates in the technical skills required in highly automated manufacturing environments and critical in being qualified for the industrial positions which utilize increasing levels of automation in modern manufacturing facilities. This training equipment includes industrial electricity, robotics, programmable log logic controllers, and mechatronics integrated systems and will augment the equipment already in place at MTech. These certification lead to student success and increased persistence in these subjects through confirmation of progress to more advanced certifications. Thank you for the consideration. Purchase order 503, Harold Washington College requests board approval for the purchase of a professional grade recording and mixing console from Sweet Water Sound for the amount not to exceed $46,500. The console will provide real-world audio equipment and experience to Harold Washington College audio students, music programs, and the college uh, programming. We're just checking on one thing before we move to 6.0. Item 6.0 requests approval of legal fees totaling $174,132.99. Such fees cover litigation, labor and employment, corporate and higher education matters. Thank you. Vice Chair Swanson, pending no further questions, that concludes the review of the board reports. Thank you, and thank you everyone. Um, may I please have a motion to discharge the July 13th, 2021 board packet, inclusive of the resolutions, personnel items, resource development report, agreements, purchases, and legal invoices included on today's committee agenda as part of the consent agenda to the July 13th, 2021 regular board meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. So thank you all. Since there's no further business to come before the committee today, may I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried and we are adjourned. We'll see you at the regular board meeting at 2 p.m.